the tight squeeze of the grave. That's an obligation upon everyone will face and they will taste. So think of all the different deeds you have done in this world. Preparing for you of that reality that is coming and is inevitable for all of us. Because no matter how much you think you tough with the guns in these days, and don't think how much you now think life is just a joke, everyone is going to be under that thousand pound dirt stacked on top of you. No matter how hard you try to push, no one is coming to rescue you. And the Prophet ﷺ had established this in his authentic sunnah. What comes in the hadith of Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ had informed about the great Sahabi Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. The one who the Prophet ﷺ said the throne of Allah shook. The throne of Allah moved for Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. And to the point, listen to this hadith, which is in Bukhari. He says that when Sa'd ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, that when he died, there were 7,000 angels that they descended in regards to his soul of how much Allah was pleased with him. Radiallahu anhu. Now listen to this hadith. Listen to the other part. Listen to this narration that's also Sahih al Jami' by Imam al Albani, what he authenticated. That the Prophet said, وَلَوْ كَانَ هُنَاكَ أَحْدٌ نَجَى مِنْ ضَمَّةِ الْقَبْرِ لَنَجَى مِنْهَا سَعْدِ بْنِ مُعَاذِ وَلَقَدْ ضُمَّ ضَمَّةً ثُمَّ رُوخِيَ عَنْهُ Allahu Akbar. He said, if there was anyone that would have been saved from the tight squeeze of the grave, from the tight pressure of the grave, that it would have been the one who deserved it was Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. Now listen to this part. Verily his grave was squeezed upon. Then it was what? Loosened up. So if that was Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, the great Sahabi, who 7,000 angels descended for, the throne of Allah shook for, then it says an authentic narration, the tight squeeze of the grave. Still, it was now put upon him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that tight squeeze to be relieved. What do you think is going to happen to us? The great Imam Fadilatul Walid Ubaid ibn Abdullah al-Jabir he said in regards to this hadith, in regards to the sharh, when he mentioned the sharh of Imam al muslim he said that the squeeze of the grave is upon everyone. They're going to have to pass that test. Then the questions of the grave will start. Then the questions of the grave will start. Huh. Are all of us preparing for the reality where we're making our investments for the hereafter in regards to the children? When we need our children to make dua for us in that moment in our lives or in that moment where the next reality of our lives and that next journey is now taking place, which is the embarking upon al-hayat al barzakhiya the life of the grave. You invest in, are we investing for that? Or are we deluded, as we mentioned in this hadith, of all we are saying and all we are mentioning in all our lives in which we're doing our best and put forth, putting, putting forth our utmost effort and rectifying our dunya. That's all we think about. Rectifying the dunya. Rectifying our affairs of the dunya. Rectifying the affairs of the dunya. Rectifying the affairs of the dunya. Shaitan saying, yeah, rectify the affairs of the dunya. Keep rectifying it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Then bang out of nowhere, death. That's what we're speaking about. For verily we know, pound on this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, how powerful Allah to be with the Allah is. There's no deity worthy of worship except Him, the one that has no beginning, the one that has no ending, the one that is bigger than everything, the one that is the highest above the creation. Everything we know, He is free from any need, any imperfection. He created everything that exists, how can we think we can succeed and move forward and win or even survive without him? 
and especially if Allah increases our wealth, we are even more in need of him. Our sins and our negligence have made us foolish. We harm ourselves daily by failure to submit. How many of us have gone backwards in our religion? In the name of success. I'll say it again one more time. How many of us have gone backwards in our religion? In the name of success. We have married the dunya and has taken our religion and our deen and our religion in Islam as its diary. It's time to divorce it. Make Toba and start moving forward. You have time to change me if it as long as the law allows you to breathe. Stop worrying about people's personalities. Certain people who smiled at you, certain people who didn't smile at you, all these petty affairs. And I'm sure that every day in this room and the out of the callers, all of them have had their portion of this, of this nonsense. And which to the point, a lot of du'as don't even care anymore. If you want to smile at me, who cares? If you will not not smile at me, who cares? I'm preparing for the grave. I could care less whether or not you smile at me or not. Or be in my feelings, oh, so and so at the match, she didn't smile at me today. Who cares? When you have a bigger goal to set, you're not worried about nonsense. When you're focused, you don't care about nonsense. When you have a goal to achieve by the father of the law, you don't worry about these petty nonsense anymore. You in your 40s, 50s, I don't care anymore. The dirt and the me being under a thousand pound dirt is coming. It's close. That's why you'll find all the prophets and the messengers that all of them began had now started their call in their 40s. You reach the level of maturity. Your mind now is set. You experience all the bumps and the thumps of life, all the mistakes and the trips. You see the hikmah while Allah to be with Ta'ala started the risala and the and the nubuwa in the time of the ages of 40. You see it. Because this is the age where your mind now needs to be mature. You need to start making better decisions. It's time for you to wake up. The grave is right there. It's coming. For verily, ya ma'asham ikhwa. Stop worrying about who smiled at you, who didn't smile at you. Let them answer for their wrongs. Forget about the ex-husband or the ex-wife that hurt you. Forget about it. Disobeying Allah in the name of retribution and revenge. Disobeying Allah will never pay that person back. The worst thing, or rather the best thing you can do is to attain and want to move forward in your religion and climb and climb and climb with your Lord. That's the best way. That's the best way you can now, certainly, if you want to so-called in the name of get revenge, but it's not revenge, nor should you intend that at all. It's to move forward in the religion and to move forward within yourself, preparing for the grave. Nothing comes before your relationship or your connection with Allah to pray with Ta'ala. Nothing. No matter who it is or what it is. Sisters, take off the tunics. Take the tunics off. Return back to proper hijab. Take the tunic shirts off because soon as you get a man and he treats you in a very disrespectful manner and it goes left, you're going to say, these men out here. You played the part in it too. You wore the tunic shirt. So you have to take some of the blame on yourself. You attract the how you what? Portray yourself. Women take off the tunic shirts. And I'm not saying to do it for anyone except Allah. Preparing for the reality of a thousand pound dirt being on top of your body, squeezing it. Because now what you've done, it's gonna now be fully repaid in that grave. The pro oh men, brothers, take off the tight jeans. Man up. And take care of your families. Stop sinning openly. 
Remove the pictures from social media. Are you brave enough to do that? Preparing for the tight squeeze of the grave? Remove the pictures from social media. How can we say we love someone? And when they die, we are passing their pictures across, over them across the internet. And I've seen this nonsense. You know what you should be doing? Not passing that picture around the internet. You should be hiding their sins and begging Allah to forgive them. Going to the prayer in the sujood, saying Allah forgive him and forgive him of his shortcomings or her shortcomings. Not passing the picture around. We have to work to do, we have work to do brothers and sisters. No more of the blame game. And we know that the punishment of the grave could be for the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, but we know the adab is, is mu'aqqad. The Prophet وسلم, has said this in the Sahih. إِنَّهُمْ لَيُعَذَّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ Verily they are being punished from his Ummah. But how they are not being punished for something, it was difficult upon them to leave off. And in some narrations we know that that meaning or what they have done when they committed that act, it was what? Tremendous until they had to be purified of the sin of being in the grave, being tortured. So keep in mind, sisters, when you wear the tunic shirts, think about the punishment of the grave. Brothers and sisters and brothers, when you want to wear the tight jeans and the tattoos and think you're all good and it's a joke, think about the tight squeeze and the punishment of the grave. May Allah ta'ala aid us. May Allah put our focus in the right place. May Allah ta'ala keep us guided and not test us in the religion and not test us in our belief and not test us in our uprightness with him ta'ala and to give us tawfiq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa subhanakallahum wa bihamdik wa shadu an la ilaha ila anta staflika wa tubi ilayk. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين